hello and welcome to the Ramon Foster Show, brought to you by the Get Go Cafe and Market and Moans in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. I'm now in Pittsburgh. I was in Baltimore and Steelers 16, Ravens 13. Moan, first, just first thing that comes to mind. Three points. <laughs> I'll be honest. The last thing you said was the score, and I was just thinking to myself again, that we are on that average. Uh, that's that's the first thing. Next thing was uh, Kenny's him. Kenny's that guy. I, you, it points you know, to it. it it's, it's, uh, I, I walked past TJ Watt in the, in the locker room, and he looks at me, and he goes, Kenny P., <laughs> Did he? Yeah. Did he? Well, he knew what I was going to be writing about. <laughs> yeah. But but it's not just him. I, I saw where Deontay had a strong comment about him, but just telling him, just be you, man, and everything yeah. going to take care of itself. Najee's post game. By the way, the maturity of that kid for a guy that's so young that does have a lot of weight of that team on his shoulder, especially offensively. Wouldn't you say that? He wants it there. I know he does, but to mm-hmm. be smart enough and mature enough to just point out, he's referring to Kenny Pickett as the young guy, like this guy got it. In that post-game interview, mm-hmm. to see him say that and just kind of designate like, that's our guy. I thought that was one of the coolest things ever. And uh, people were asking me on social media as I was live tweeting my emotions during, during that game. Mm-hmm. Like, I how, saw. How, how do you know? <laughs> How do you know, you know, like the Kenny's that guy? And I was like, man, there's moments, which we talked about last week, right? Remember that those moments in the Raiders, we spoke about that. But it's also just development of like little small clues from like your teammates. Like now you got your teammates talking about this stuff and you got a stat line was low as ever, right? As far as like big time numbers, 168 yards. Like, let's be real about that. It's not being thrown for 500 plus in a game. But to have them support him and back him up in that conversation about he can be special, that right there, that confidence of when you know you belong can take you a very long way, DK. Yeah, and it's it's not just inward or internal confidence. Kenny, you want to talk about being self-aware. Yeah, Kenny said that when he was in the huddle, he detected more of a confidence in him from others. Do you follow? Yeah. Okay, yes. so it, it's not like – see, this is the part – this is one of the very few things that would be tough for you to relate to because you were in that huddle. I mean, other than the year with Mason, you were in a huddle with the Hall of Famer all the time, and everybody yeah. knew he was just oozing it all over the place. Yeah. And, 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 and Kenny's in that huddle, and he senses around him that they believe in him, that they expect him to take them those 80 yards down there. And then, you know what, Moan, when he does it, yeah. and he does it two weeks in a row, and he does it on partially on the strength of other contributors, significant yeah. contributors. Najee, uh, the O-line, the left side yeah. of the O-line where Najee kept running. We'll yep. get to that. <laughs> but also, uh, a, you know, big catch from Pat Fryermuth, big catch from Steven Sims. Uh, there were there were other players who who participated in this. Oh, by the way, that's Steven Sims pass. How? How, DK? I'll let you go on, but you can't run past that catch and throw to say it, it was just a normal catch and throw. No, that wasn't normal right there. But go no, ahead. No, he 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 it's it's funny on, on super slow mo, the pass really looks like hell. Like it's doing <laughs> it's doing it's it's one of these. Okay. Yeah. But guess where it came down? Yeah. Right. Right between the eight and the two, it, okay, it did. and and his passes, I thought the uh, the two across the body passes that he made first to Fryermuth and then of course on the touchdown were just something that you're so used to seeing from him. But Moan, what about the intangible? When you're in that huddle, you take me in there yeah. because you again you were there with the Hall of Fame guy. <laughs> How much do you look in his eyes and feed off of what he's bringing and listen to his voice? I think players see that confidence too. Like you, like you said, Ben oozed of it, right? As we're talking about the quarterback position. Like hey, we walk out there and we're out there, like just wide eye, and Ben just he do this. And I'm, I'm, I'll describe it. He look down at his play call sheet and just flip it back, look up at us real slow, flip it back, and just all right, guys, let's go to work. 
there was no worry whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So to see Kenny say that he hit one of those moments where like, look, I'm, I got this. I'm one of those guys. And I think the other part too, that's always super interesting about teams, about, you know, especially when you got 11 people on the field or basketball, when you're the new guy inside the huddle or baseball, when you're lead off and there's pressure on being lead off on something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's the acceptance of, do I deserve this? And the fact that he felt that in the huddle and felt that from his teammates, man, I think says a lot about it, too, because what's one of the other bigger things that you need when it comes down to, uh, to to your confidence as a player? The acceptance of your teammates. That does matter. Nobody's going to say that. But like being a new young guy in the NFL and being a new starter. Like there is a level of do I belong. And for him to say something like that to show, look, I I can compete with these guys. They're going to look to me. We now. It's not just, hey, let's watch what the young boy going to do. It's us now. Watch what we do. And I thought that, man, to hear him say those types of things, DK, it's the worst thing you can do is let a guy that has a lot of potential start realizing that they actually have it. Yeah, I mean, this is why, oh, Moan, here we go. This is why. No, Ramon and I, anybody who watches your show knows regularly, we don't agree on everything, okay? Right. Not on right. camera, not off camera. That's why it's real. Yeah. However, one thing that we were on 100% together was this idea that the Steelers needed to win in order to improve. Yep. Okay? We can, we can, we're, we're still there. And now you see why. Because it advances the development of, of yep. the individual players. It advances the collective faith, the belief of the players in themselves, in each other, which otherwise you'd have to go through in 2023 with your precious first round pick that you would have slid up a few <laughs> extra notches for. Yeah, it, it, it does happen to go down the winner, but that's also when they go through a skid of losses though, DK, that's where you also got just kind of question like, what's the answer? Uh, you know, I, I cover a team here in Nashville, and there's that's six in a row, and they're trying to figure out how do we win. You don't have those questions when you have winning in front of you. you. You know the recipe. You know, okay, oh, you're good at this. Let's build off of that. Oh, we shouldn't do those types of things. Like, you have direct answers when you win. That's because the outcome is what you want it to be. Yes, you clean up everything else around that, but the outcome being a dub lets you know you did more things right than you did wrong. And I think that's where this team is for the most part. That's where Kenny is, again, taking care of the ball. Yes, you take a couple sacks. No turnovers. We saw the athleticism kind of pop up. We saw the 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 the, the quick passes come out mm-hmm. on the down the field stuff that we all spoke about. And, of course, the weapons that you have, George bleeping Pickens, Deontay making a big play, Najee, it's, it was the usual suspects. When we come back, 198 yards on the ground in Baltimore. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. 198 yards on the ground. Let me go through the big sheet, Moan, to see how that broke down because it was a beautiful thing on mass. But when you look at it individually, it's even prettier because Najee Harris with 111 yards on 22 carries. Jalen Warren with 76 yards on 12 carries when both of them lined up in the backfield and he's running sweeps for the first time in his life. He in would his tell life? us afterward. Yeah. It didn't look like it. I was it nervous that look- he stepped out of bounds on that play though, on the, on the uh, 31 yarder, mm-hmm. but he tiptoed like he was a small guy and he's a bigger back. Is he not at least with his pads and TV he, yeah, makes him look like a bigger back. He's got wider shoulders than you might think uh, for yeah. someone of his, of his height. Yeah, uh, but no, he's not. He's not some super thick guy or by any stretch. He just he moves. Yeah, he, moves. he does, and it's with oh my gosh, it, it it's with violence is how he moves. Like Najee, <laughs> Najee and Jalen Warren both man. I'm looking at him hit the gap and just shed tackles and take care of the ball and do all the things that they know they're gonna have contact on man. And you're right, one ninety eight DK in Baltimore on the road. 
It don't get no more beautiful than that. And of course, 198 just didn't happen because the running backs are that good. Oh, no. Who else might have contributed to this, Mr. Foster? We heard him say it after the game. Najee, I think, is listening to our podcast that he just knows ball. And I think it's the latter. He just knows ball. He bragged on that group afterwards, like, man, look where we are. It's our O-line. It's our O-line from where we started earlier this year, which means what, DK? When we said it wasn't pretty, it, it wasn't. wasn't pretty. It wasn't. And it, it wasn't just them. It was him. It was Jalen. Maybe it was play calling also. We're seeing a lot of variety right now, more than we did in the earlier part of the season. But he, Najee, acknowledged, look, we have grown. Those guys have grown. We don't have this type of game in this environment without them. He said those things. Again, you're watching that group, and, of course, the big conversation goes to <laughs> – what do you do? You know, I've always talked about, look, there can be an upgrade or two, but I'm watching them kind of come together and sink a little bit to where, again, that line, if you can see my hands on the on, on YouTube or wherever you're watching, they're moving together. Whether it be slanted like this, slanted to the left, or straight ahead, they're moving the line of scrimmage against Baltimore, who's notorious for having what, DK? A big DN, another big DN, a huge nose tackles. And, and linebackers is going to hit the gap like none other. And that's the perfect segue into something that Kevin Dotson told me after the game where he spent this past week playing, of course, Ramon's old position there. Mm-hmm. He, he spent this past week working with the coaches on going after linebackers. Yeah. They were going to do something a little bit different. This wasn't just going to be guard on DT, guard on DT, here's man against man. He was going to make sure that Baltimore couldn't stunt all the guys that they did oh. in, the, in, in the gaps before uh, to stop the Steelers' run. That was going to make Dotson's role unusual mm-hmm. and also vital beyond words because if he messes up, if he yep. can't handle getting out to what's in football known as the second level, second get out level. those uh, second level blocks, if he couldn't do that, the whole thing was going to yes. sink. Yes. Okay. And he, Moan, was so proud, <laughs> like yeah. a child, after this game. And he should have been. Yeah, I've been there before where you have, you know, everybody has their strengths and deficiencies, right? Some some of it can be uh, getting out in space and screen. Some of it can be this guy's not the strongest in pass protection, so we got to protect them. Uh, a good bit of it when it comes down to the way Pittsburgh plays ball is, is run blocking and getting to the second level. Like, it's one thing to secure the first, as I spoke about them in unison together. But how am I on the second level? Will they shake me? Will I be able to get attached to them and move them around? Am I helping my, my center? Am I helping my tackle enough on my combo blocks? All of that go into play when you're speaking about those types of things that that he was speaking of when it comes Kevin Dotson when it comes down to what's vital for him to make this offense succeed. I knew for me, if Pounce had a tight shade on his left side and we're going to the right, moan. However, you got to get there. Throw technique out the window. Cut off that nose tackle. That was the deficiency of mine. So I creep down a little bit get close to pounce, jump the snap a little bit. All of that is fine. That's called growth. To me, Dotson even mentioned that to you says growth. It says, look, you can develop into a pro. And to be fair, most offensive linemen take about three years. You know, we speak about that and we have more patience for first rounders, right? Yep. In those positions, and I think honestly, Marquise and Dave probably skewed a little bit of what development at those positions can be. Yeah, when it <laughs> they're when not it come the norm. Down, yeah. No, because even when Gill was starting, Marcus Gilbert, Gill wasn't the greatest starter at the time. Mike Adams started, wasn't the greatest starter at the nope. time. Al wasn't the greatest starter at the time. I wasn't the greatest. Star- like it takes time to develop in that at that position and. The other portion of that is you got to kind of play together. So bring all that to, to, to full circle. Najee acknowledging that for the world to hear if you stuck around for it was huge. The run that Najee had on the last drive, it was down near uh, – it was inside the red zone, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the Baltimore red zone, and it was a five-yard run. And I know you remember because he kind of almost went – did one of those airborne things because he yeah. knew where he – okay <laughs> – well, when you watch that tape, and this is true probably even a former offensive lineman like yourself, yeah. where there's a there's a natural instinct to just watch the ball. Who's, who's mm-hmm. got the ball? Second time I watched it, I watched Dotson. 
and he took Roquan Smith, who had dominated the Steelers in every way yeah, in the previous did. meeting, took Roquan Smith for a walk. Yeah. Okay, six yards downfield. There went Roquan. Okay, yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> you yeah. Can, now, you, now it's ringing a yeah. bell. Yeah. And I, I said to Dotson afterward, I said, I said, I, you know, you did that more often in this game than I can remember since that time he took over for Matt Filer. Remember? Mm-hmm. He, go, he goes, he goes, oh yeah, first game, right? I go, yeah, first game. I go, you're ta- you're sending people into the next solar system, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and he said, well, that's that's when it's fun, man. Oh, so that that's great that you said that and brought that back up to DK because this is the other side of when, when we talk about last week. Remember when I said if I was in that locker room, I'd say after the Raiders game. This is what it takes to win in this league. We don't just walk out there. And I, I guarantee you, looking at what Roquan Smith did the first time to the Steelers, to this team right now, they said to themselves, not again. That's basically what, what Dotson said. It's not again. Even the way they attacked Baltimore this time around, same setup, Lamar Jackson wasn't in. And they, they said, whether they admitted it or not, not Again, DK, we, we've had this conversation about those types of moments, about those types of situations and scenarios to where you say this group got veteran leadership, but it's mostly on defense. Am I correct? Chook's not a big talker. Najee's probably the, no. the, the, he's probably the most prominent leader on that side of the ball. Deontay's not that type of leader type, right? So this group is kind of learning on the fly for you to kind of acknowledge that and say that you know, the, the results of him getting Roquan this time around is because now they've learned. And that's a beautiful process, man. I told you, that was the one thing that we had. It was like, what, what are y'all going to do? Well, we're going to fight. From there, we'll, we'll go from there. But as long as we fight, we got something. And as long as you fight against Baltimore, you're going to be, you know, yeah. you're going to be in the game. And guess what? It works in both directions, and that's why they're always three points. Absolutely amazing. When we come back, the only segment that matters. Hey. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It's time for the only segment that matters, and that's brought to you always by our friends at the Get Go Cafe and Market, where I paid a visit on my way back, Moan, from uh, the, the fairly long drive. Yeah, yeah, to and from Baltimore, it's it's like four hours in each direction. I stopped at the Irwin store and managed to pick up a couple of uh, quality apps. That's what they call oh, them. They call them apps. Is uh, apps? <laughs> you think of apps on your phone? These are apps nah. as appetizers. Yeah, these are the ones you ingest. <laughs> That's right. Order your favorite entry at the Get Go Cafe and Market. You can do it on the app. You can do it in the store today. Better believe it. Our Entry today comes from Crystal Privet, and she says, Hey, Moan, I'm very confused. How is the left side of the offensive line, on one hand, their weakest strength, when by far it's the side that Najee has the most success on? Mm. Wow. He that's- was running to the left side I- nonstop. Stop. You you want a little pro tip when it comes down to it? Uh, just because a guy goes one direction doesn't mean that's where the most movement is, though, too. If what you, do you look at the way plays are, they'll go left and cut back right. It's where the natural progression of making the, the run gap is, is opening up at. They probably the, the left side is very athletic. You got to give them that and strong. Dan Moore, strong guy, right? Yep. Uh, Dotson, strong guy. They're probably better people movers on the front side than they are back side. Again, we spoke about that in the last segment when we spoke about Dotson getting up to the second level. You put Dotson in a position where he can bang a big guy up front, let Mason Cole get up to the second level, let let, uh, James Daniels slip to the back side and Chooks clean up. Like, look at the natural progression of the way offensive line run. Run left or running right is simply just a direction. Where you actually hit the hole is probably in the backside A gap. Like, it's very interesting. Backside A gap or B gap. Uh, and, and that's the unique part about offensive line play. And I, I know a lot of people just think, you know, O-line play is specifically moving bodies. Hey, if it's run left, the running back goes left. And, hey, that's the way it's designed. No. You block front side to open up for the backside play. If Let's say it's 33 dive or 35 dive. You take your trajection to the left. But then you'll see a guy straightening up 
probably in the backside a gap is how it usually works. Najee's out. been doing a lot of that. And it's, it's it's funny. It's it's one of the things that we had talked about earlier in the season when we were occasionally critical of him. Yeah, fairly because too. you saw things on the film that that had you convinced that there were holes there that he wasn't necessarily attacking. Yeah, and and that's that's smart on him too. Like I said, I I think his praise of this offensive line is simply because he they probably had conversations together to try to work oh, yeah. through. Those mm-hmm. things. And and like I said, 35 dive to the left is probably 35 zone. And that's what they're running in a sense. It's zone left that has a natural curve back to the backside A or front side A gaps too. But what it does, it gives the running back time to let your offensive line develop the gap for you, de- develop the holes for you. And that's where their production has actually come from. Like I said, you look at the way uh, our style was with the gap scheme, right? Who's the, who's the notorious pooler for us, DK? Oh, DeCastro, De, yeah. DeCastro. Yeah. But this was the thing. Alejandro and myself, we were very strong. as We were big guys, number one, but we were very strong as far as keeping the front side to where Dave didn't get knocked off his pool. Mm-hmm. If Dave gets knocked off his pool, we don't see the athleticism of DeCastro coming around the corner. No, we secured the front no. side. I know exactly Dave, what you mean. They couldn't get through you to cut Dave off. Exactly. Yeah. So Dave had a clear uh, cleanup to either kick out the defensive end or turn up for a linebacker. That's how it works. You say, oh, they're running left and watch the Castro. <laughs> well, Al, Pounce, and myself are securing the front side so that he gonna, he doesn't get knocked off his path. No, and that, that's – that it, it's been something to see with this offensive line, Crystal. The only thing I'd add is that it, it's not always about which offensive linemen are performing the best. It's also about where you want to attack the opponent. Yes. And it, it when Baltimore is seeding yardage on that mm-hmm. side, you're not in the booth overthinking things, are you? You bet not. You bet not. <laughs> And you know what's what's crazy about you saying that? Mm. It's not crazy. It's just common sense, as you said it. We go to the sideline, and 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 whoever offense, whether it was it was Coogs, whether it was Munch, whether it was Surrett, what <coughs> hey, what you guys want to do? Heck, what's working? Let's go with that. <laughs> really? <laughs> you guys short? Yeah, no, nah, there's no – look, Coach, I got them. We th- That's the conversation. Keep running that. And then you know when it's good, even on like a three and out. Coach. Come back to that play. We can work them in that one. He went, okay, okay. Give me a second. I'll, uh, you know, he'll he'll call in the uh, the call to the OC at the time. But that's how it works. Stay with the hot hand when it comes down to what's working, especially against Baltimore like that. They wore all black, thinking they had a funeral too. Huh? What about Ooh, that? Man, he's still in the rivalry. I am. <laughs> I am. Well, I I hope that answered your question, Crystal. A lot of people ask, like, where do you leave the? How do I send you the whatever? Just put it in the comments anywhere you. Comments, yeah. yeah, we'll find it. You don't have to. You don't have to like send out a carrier pigeon or something like that. <laughs> or, or personal emails. I promise you, we're gonna see them. I've got emails with Haymons in them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's they, they they come in a lot of different forms mm-hmm. here. But the, but the point is, there's that we see all of them. It's not like there's some super secret doorway, you know, uh, through which to enter. Um, by the way, to a lot of young guy surgeons, we'll have to talk about uh, in the upcoming week, man, which would be huge. One particular guy, when it comes down to physicality in this uh, Cleveland Browns run game, that I'm looking forward to seeing. Let's let's do that one tomorrow, and uh, I also want to bring up something about inside linebackers on the next show.